joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. And enter into his gate with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord, he is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. So we come and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. For he is good. Amen. So we just thank you for joining us once again with our pastor, the Reverend Michael A. Polk Sr., and our assistant pastor, Reverend Andrew McDavid. Again, we greet you with Jesus' joy, and as we have been doing for about a year, We'll give you that virtual hug, amen, and let you know that God loves you, and we at St. Paul, we love you too, amen, amen. So as we open up our service in prayer, we pray that you will pray along with me, amen. There's a lot to pray about, amen, but we want to just open up the service in prayer, amen. Father God, we come, oh God, just thank you for one more day. We thank you, God, for the breath in our bodies and the strength in our limbs, oh God, that we may walk and talk and hear, oh God, we thank you that all these things are because you have given it to us. But, oh God, we thank you, oh God, for who you are, oh God. We thank you that you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten Son that we may have the right to eternal life. So, Father, we thank you, oh God. We thank you for all of those who are under the sound of our voice, oh God. We pray that you have made a choice to serve God today. And we thank you, O oh Father, for our pastor, O oh God. We pray that you would strengthen him on every side, O oh God, we pray. But, O oh God, we know there is some other prayer request, O oh God, that we, we fail to mention. But we want to say thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you are one who can comfort us when we feel alone, O oh God, for you have never forsaken us, O oh God. You're always there. Your presence is always with us. And we thank you, O oh God, that you can comfort us in our times of bereavement. In our times of loneliness, oh God, you are there to comfort us and strengthen us and love on us, oh God, we pray. And oh Father, we thank you for your healing power, for your healing power, oh God, we thank you, oh God, for your healing power. But as we close this prayer, oh God, we thank you most of all for your salvation power, oh God, that you saved us, that you give us a right and opportunity to confess you. Oh God, and believe in our hearts that we may be saved. Thank you, oh God, for the salvation experience, oh God, and the sanctification process, oh God, we thank you. But oh God, as we close out this prayer, we want to do things pleasing in your sight. So help us, oh God. Receive our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. So again, we thank God for one more day. Amen. And we want to, by way of announcement, uh, announce to our pastor's anniversary committee that we will be meeting tomorrow in the fellowship hall at 4.30. At 4.30, we move the time back to 4.30 uh, on tomorrow. So we want to give that announcement. And as well, we want to keep on encouraging you about the city, the citywide yard sale on May the 15th. We would want to know, let you know that if you want to be involved, please call the church office. Amen, and we can give you all the details needed uh, for that day, May the 15th. But again, we just thank God that we are here today, amen, and we pray that you came ready to worship and praise your Lord and Savior, amen, amen. So we're going to bless God in song today, and I don't know what you came to do, amen, but that song says, but I come to praise the Lord, amen. So we're going to have my wife come and bless us. Amen. And we come to let God know that we have come into this house to worship him. Amen.
verse 19. Brother Sonny, I did want to give this to you this morning. That's for Brother Josh. If you give that to him, please, from St. Paul. Amen. Amen. Praise God on this blessed day. And thank God I uh, left out the house with my small print Bible. So I need a little help this morning. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting that age now where things are getting smaller. And so I need a larger print. But the deacon is here. He's going to help me in the book of Acts in the third chapter. And I want to begin reading at verse 12 to verse 19. Praise God. We thank Brother Jerry and Sister Lessie. Thank you all so much for sharing in the ministry of song this morning. Amen. And now the word of God. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, marvel ye at this. Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, have glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to be determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One, and the just, and, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in, and his name through faith in it, excuse me, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him have given him the perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance you did, you did, you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God, but those things which God before had shown by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer. He, he hath so fulfilled. That's verse 18. Let's read verse 19. And verse 19 says, Repent ye there, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. May the Lord have a blessing upon the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Deacon, for sharing the word of God with us people of God on this blessed day. And what I want to share with you just for a little while is reflections on the power that does the work. The power that does the work. Praise God. In this third chapter of the book of Acts, that verses 1 through 10, they report the healing of a lame man in the temple. Reports the healing of this lame man and the astonishment of the crowd. And the Bible says that Peter and John they went up into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. That's about three in the afternoon Please understand that for devout Jews, there were three special times for prayer. It was morning, noon.
noon and evening. We ought to praise God this morning that prayer still works. Still works. All across this country, all across this nation, we have so much to pray about. And I'm glad this morning that prayer still works. All of the loss of life. And I have no problem saying this morning that black lives matter. Amen. All lives matter. We need, we need to be praying all across the country. Yet at the same time, prayer was never meant to be a labor saving device. Oftentimes we have to put feet to our prayers. We have to put feet to our prayers and do all that we can do. And then we trust God to do what God will do. We do all that we can do and then trust God to do the rest. was the hour of prayer. And Peter and John, they were going into the temple to observe it. And the Bible says a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. He was carried there daily to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked an alms. Peter Fastening his eyes on him with John said, look on us, look on us. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. The Bible says that Peter shared that silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. I mean, what does Peter have? Hmm. What does Peter have? Peter has the power of the name of Jesus. Anybody know that there is power? Yes. I mean, Holy Ghost power. There is shown up power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Anybody know of that power that does the work? This is what Peter has. Peter has the power of the name of Jesus. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping 
up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Amen, amen. We are not ever forget to thank people who help us. But more than anything, we are not ever forget the power that does the work. Anybody thank God this morning for the power that does the work? No, you didn't wake yourself up this morning. God did it. You're here not because you walked on your own, but God did it. God blessed you. You are not ever forget about the power that does the work in your life, and his name is Jesus. This man, he, he didn't forget about the power that does the work. We need to help others in the community of God as his church because we have that power. We need to use that God-given power to help others in the community. And even on the day, we need to use that power, that God-given power, to reach out and help others up. Listen, that's what folk are looking for on today. They're not necessarily looking for a handout more so than they are looking for a hand up. And we can do it because we have the power of God in our lives. Amen. This man, he didn't forget about the power that does the work. He was praising God in the temple. Here in this 12th verse, we see this crippled man who uh, was healed. Uh, he's still clinging to Peter and to John. And, and with this healed man still clinging to them, all the people ran together unto them, greatly wondering. And look at what Peter did. When Peter saw it, he didn't try and take credit for the move of God. No, the Bible said that when Peter saw it, he answered to the people, why do you stare at us as though by our own power, our own piety, our own holiness, that we made this man to walk? We didn't do it. God did it. In my mind, in my mind's eye, I can hear Peter preaching. And this is Peter's sermon on today. Uh, you don't mind if I preach Peter's sermon just for a little while on today because in my mind's eye, I can hear Peter preaching. I can hear Peter saying, let's be perfectly clear here about the power that does the work. Let's be clear. He says that it was God who had been at work. No, the same God who you had come to the temple to worship is the same God who has been at work here. Let's be clear about the source of power. Make no mistake about it. Uh, let's be clear. Uh, it's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors is the same God who has been at work here. And in doing so, he glorified his son and his name is Jesus. You know, the same Jesus, the same Jesus is at work here. You know, the same Jesus who you delivered up, the same Jesus who you denied, the same Jesus you denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You denied the Holy One.
one and the just and denied, uh, yeah, you, you denied him and you desired a murderer to be granted unto you. You killed him. You killed the prince of life. All across the country, we're witnessing, we're witnessing a miscarriage of justice. We've seen it all of our lives. But you're talking about a miscarriage of justice? They killed the Prince of Life. Listen, they were given a choice between one who took life his name was Barabbas. They were given a choice between one who took life and one who is the very author of life. And we come up with Barabbas? Hmm. All right now. But to Jesus, the prince of life, the author, and the finisher of our faith to the same Jesus. We cry, crucify him, crucify him. We nailed him in his hands. Pierced him in his side. And he died. Laid him in a barroom tomb. Thank God it was barroom because he wouldn't be there long. But he stayed there all Friday night. Stayed there all Saturday night. But thank God this morning that early Sunday morning. Anybody thanking God that he got up? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Somebody ought to say, but God. Of Nazareth. I mean, sick of 
healed in the name of Jesus. Miracles are performed in the name of Jesus. And sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. Make no mistake, it was in the name of the living Jesus that this healing was offered. Make no mistake, it was in the name of the living Jesus that the healing was accepted. Make no mistake, it was in the name of the living Jesus that the healing was accomplished. I'm just about done. What I want us to be perfectly clear about is that the miracle, the healing of this beggar, it was a testimony. It was a testimony to the people of Israel that the one that they had crucified was alive was willing to be their healer and savior. His name is Jesus. As we close this word, look at verse 17. It's at verse 17 that Peter called them brethren. He said, now, brother, I know that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers in ignorance. I don't know about you, but I'll confess this morning that I've done some ignorant stuff. And y'all looking at me sideways this morning, but if you would tell the truth and shame the devil, you know you've done some ignorant stuff too. Amen. Some of us are still doing some ignorant stuff now. All right now. And you ought to be praising God in the house because there is still to repent. Amen. In the midst of you doing all this ignorant stuff, there's some good news. There is still time to repent. Peter said, you did it in ignorance. Any actions they committed in ignorance. Peter has a word for him. He says that it can be set right. And that's a message for us today. As long as we recognize the power that does the work, even though we've done some ignorant stuff, even though we're still doing some ignorant stuff, the ignorance that we have committed can be set Set it right by receiving the Savior. His name is Jesus. We set it right by receiving the Savior whom they rejected. That's some ignorant stuff right there. It's ignorant because they deny the very one that's able to save. Deny the very one that 
that's able to save you, that's able to help you, it's time. Get it right with God. Repent ye therefore. And be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Time of refreshing shall come for the presence of the Lord. So many people, I know we're living in postmodern times. Thank you. 
today. We need you today. And we pray these things in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen and thank God. Amen. Amen.